Kelly Cochran Carter uh, banned Russia. Nothing could be sold to Russia. This is 7, 1976. And you can't. Uh, I just want to tell you what, what goes on politically. You can't sell to Russia. And Carter's not going to give away all. I mean, Carter gave all the secrets to Russia. He, he gave it all away. I, I voted for the guy. I didn't vote the second time for him. I mean, I, I admit it. He seemed like something different. He was different. Right? But we did a ton of when, when it was banned. You can't do work work for Russia. It's not going to Russia. That's what we did all the Russian work. For. We, we did a, a ton of Russian work after that. But. Uh, we, we did work for Russia. You know how they get around that? I think I've told you. They, you build it here in America. You can't sell it to Russia. You sell it into Canada. It goes into Canada. From Canada, it would go to Finland. And then from Finland, it goes into Russia. So it, they just do the end around. It, it just, it, it's, a, it's such nonsense. It's... On and on and on it goes. And you know where Molotov cocktail comes from, don't you? Who here knows what Molotov? What, what, what is a Molotov? You know what Molotov cocktail? Who is Molotov? He's a right hand man of Stalin. He is a, an ambassador for Stalin. Molotov. He's a, I think he's an ambassador of World War II. World War II. Yeah, something like that. Uh, I thought it was an ambassador, but anyway, it was Stalin, World War II. And uh, by the way, who won that war? They had they had a, uh, a war between Finland and Russia. Who won? Anybody involved? No, Russia. No, Finland won. Russia then went at it the second time on the second time. Finland beat them, pushed them out, but Russia came back with a vengeance. And so Molotov is, I, I think it's just a jar full of gasoline with a wick in it. You light it because the fumes burn, not the gas. And, and they named it after the the war. What you call them, war ambassador? But that's where Molotov comes from. That's where the term comes from. It's not in the Bible. It's not. It's not a Bible lesson. Job twenty five. Joke 25. That was before World War II or right during when that all got started by 38, 39. Oh. Before my time, people act like, like, well, how should I know? Well, I'm not that old. I wasn't born in 1930. If I was, I'd be dead by now. Job 25, we are going to do verse 4. We will get started. And we will preach three S's. The sinner, the Savior, and the saint. The sinner, the Savior, and the saint. Anybody too warm? Anybody too warm? All right, no takers on that. Verse 4, Father, bless now the preaching. Uh, I pray that uh, you would save the sinner at nearest hell, that you would convict those that are adults to weigh and to consider their salvation in their final destiny. It's better to be sure than sorry. It's better to be sure you're saved than in the end to be sorry that you weren't. Father, convict the hearts. Turn us in Christ's name. I pray. Amen. Do you get saved first and then repent? Or do you repent and then get saved? You know, that, that came up. When I was at this church, and, uh, and, and I, I know what I said to the preacher, no salvation, no. No repentance, no salvation. That was my response. 
But there is a verse, so we'll use it today. I was turned. He turned and then repented. After he was turned. There's, it's in Jeremiah. There's a verse for everything. We'll begin by reading the Word of God, verse four, and we're going to get, we're, we're just going to get right on right on down to it. How then can man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? Now we already I wrote a note in my Bible, my white Bible margin is the answer to that question is, and that is through Jesus. That's the only way. It begins with the sinner. How then can a man be justified with God or how can a, he be clean that is born of a woman? So obviously he's dirty. He's a sinner. So it begins with the sinner. Thou wast altogether born in sin. Every man at his best state is altogether vanity. But oh, one may say there are but good and evil men. Men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are a lie. Men of different degrees, but all cut from the world. Brothers, brothers and sisters. We are all cut from the same cloth. We are all born of the seed of Adam. Sin is as a king against whom there is no rising up. There is no grace to subdue it and no power to squelch sin. Can you not say, as Paul said, I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing? It's tough to say that and to admit that. Those that come from middle America, that you may, may have been raised in the church, you sang in a, in, in a big church as a child. You went to Christian school, you were in the, uh, 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 you were in, in the choir. It, it's, it's tough. That is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. In the beginning, as all things have a beginning, man was made in the image of God. Let us make man in our image. God did make man upright. <clears throat> God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions, the Word of God says. The beginning of, of inventions, the very beginning of inventions was to eat of the forbidden fruit. I believe it was an apple. I believe that. He, fi he finds the gal, he finds his, his bride under the apple tree, it says in the Song of Solomon. He ate of the forbidden fruit. Who was it? It was a she, it was Eve. Took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. You know, he, he portrays the type of Christ as, as you want to look at it. We'll just throw this in. He said, since I can't, I, is, since if I can't live with her since she ate of the apple, I'll die for her. There's a type of Christ. I'll die for her. So he bites. He who was to have lordship, dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth was not to spend, he probably didn't spend one night in paradise. Nevertheless, man being in honor, and he was in honor, abideth not. You know, you'd like to think he made it a day or two. And, you know, they, they debate these things. But, but the Bible isn't clear on it. He probably didn't make it through the night. Adam ate and fell, and another rose up in his stead. Somebody rose up in his place. Tis, it is the same equivalent as the Antichrist. As man is against, man is against Jesus. Man is against Christ. Said of the Antichrist could be said of fallen Adam. And he in his estate shall stand up as a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom. So Adam fell and another Adam rose up in his estate. 
a vile person, a defiled Adam, an Adam with a fallen nature. That is you and I in our fallen nature. Is equivalent to an Antichrist. We be as Adam, for we are born in Adam's image. We are as Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might in the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. But because, here's the sin, but because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then defilest thou it. Reuben became unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. Adam had worn a coat of innocency, only to have it pulled off by his transgression and replaced it with a coat of shame and glory into shame. When we sin, it is as if we were born blind. Darkness was upon the face of the deep, the word of God says, as Satan hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Having the understanding darkened, we as sinners have hearts that are darkened as fools. It becomes as the plague of darkness which can be felt, which covered the land of Egypt three days. Three days and three nights. After that, the resurrection, the light came on. Unable to make righteous judgment that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Ever since Adam ate of the tree of knowledge, his eyes were opened and we all lost our eyesight. Amen. Our sin is as the sin of Satan. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. We were created perfect and we ate and iniquity was found in us. Thine heart was lifted up. So one may ask, how long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? How long? Till I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth. Until I will bring to ash, thee to ashes upon the earth. You will remain a sinner till you die. Madness is in their heart while they live. That's how long. For the wages of sin is death. It is as a marriage. It's, a, it's like a marriage. We are tied to our sin till death do us part. We all have sinned. That's what the word says, for all have sinned. You may ask, even me? Even you. The heavens are not, the Bible says, see, the heavens are not clean in his sight. And how much more abominable is filth, filthy as man, which drinketh iniquity like water. When one is sick, he feels sick, he feels sick all over. You know, when you, when you, when you get the fever, you get sick, it's, I, I always tell the, the wife, I said, it's like the grip. It, it, it's the whole body. That's what sin is like. When one is a sinner, he is a sinner all over. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even under the head, there's no soundness in it. God draws a line in the sand and commands man not to step across. Yet Satan is as a suitor who woos. He hath... Yea, hath God said he woos, he woos. God's line separates God's will from man's will, but the sinner crosses God's will to fulfill his own will. Thy neck is as an iron sinew. Your will refuses to bend to God's will. We serve the creature more than the creator. Sin is as Sheba the son of Bekri, who found refuge in a city as long as it remains in the city, that is Sheba, the sin, remains in the city. Joab, the death angel, will besiege the city until he subdues it. So sin is the Sheba that dwells there. The city is the sinner where he dwells, and Joab is the death angel. Sin is as leprosy. Adam's leprosy cleaves to us as Naaman's leprosy cleaved to Gehazi. In sin, in sin did my mother conceive me. 
That's what the Bible says. For those that are saved, this nature is referred to as the old man. Because its beauty is gone, its glory has faded. This original sin is referred to as the law of sin. And men must needs do what sin will have them. The love of sin, men love sin. It, they're drawn to it. And then there's the law of sin, which drives us. The one draws us and the one drives us. As, uh, as, as watching uh, these, these old movies, and you see a steam engine, they'll show uh, a, a locomotive. Uh, I'm trying to think of an illustration that does that, that pushes and pulls. See, in an automobile, you only have that pushing the piston. It only pushes the piston. In a steam engine, that piston is push and pull. I mean, we don't waste any energy in this. One side pushes the piston, it's a sealed compartment. And then, and, and, and then, it, then the steam goes on the other side and, it, and it, one pulls the piston, the other pushes the piston. One pulls, it, this one sin pulls us in and the other pushes us in. Just watch those old movies when they show the the uh, wheels turning and the, and the thing turning the wheels and the train. They show the train going like this. Well, look at the lever. There's a lever there, and it shifts the steam from the one side of the piston, and it's, then it, it turns that off and it pushes that opens up, pushing that out, and it drives the, the steam onto the other side. A real steam engine goes both ways. I think most of the men understand what I'm talking about. The sin, one pulls us in, the other, the law of sin drives us in. It's awful. All men suffer from it. All men, all women. The love of sin draws us, the law of sin drives us. Ah. You know, I preach a sermon in three crosses. There's three crosses in the Bible. There's, there's Christ's cross. He hangs on a cross. That cross is empty. Then there's our cross. I am crucified with Christ. And there's a third cross. The world is crucified under me. The world is crucified. There's three crosses in the Bible. Oh, and there's the cross that you and I carry. See, sin is like a beautiful woman. A young man is attracted to a beautiful woman. It's the old nature. It's like the old nature is up there, and he's attracted to a beautiful woman. Doesn't a, a woman do herself up to make her look all the more prettier? But if you're hanging here, lady, if you're hanging on a cross, and you're this beautiful young girl, and men are drawn to that sin, <laughs> they're drawn to that. Every day, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. That's the new man lives. And that when you're crucified with Christ, there's this slow, agonizing death. Every day that goes by, you get one more wrinkle. You gain a little more weight. You get a little bit more nasty looking. Until at the end, you're nothing more than an old hag. That's what should happen to the old man just to get to be an old man. What would you call a man? A man, I don't know. Just that old bag of bones. To the point where we're no longer 
drawn to that. Sin has made our well poison. Sin, it has made our spring poison. It has made our pottage poison. As the prophets cried out to Elijah, O thou man of God, there's death in the pot. Our lives are as the waters of Mara, bitter with sin. Sin is, is not as a lodger, as one who spends the night, then moves on, but as a dweller. He's, he's, he doesn't, he's not a lodger for the evening renting the room out for one night to move on. He is a dweller. Sin that dwelleth, as the word says, sin that dwelleth in me. Sin is like a weight which doth easily beset us. It slows us, it hinders us. Unable to mount up as with wings of eagle. Surely what you describe is not I. Surely that's not but surely it is. Yet who would have thought, who would have thought that Peter would deny Jesus? That David would commit adultery? That Noah would have gotten drunk? If God leaves man to himself, how quickly he falls out of the way. As Joseph, who is as Christ, says to his brethren, See that ye fall not out of the way. Surely tis not I you speak. Yes, it is. As Hazael was told, Thou wilt, thou wilt dash their children and rip up their women with, with child. He, he, he gives this prophecy to Hazael. And Hazael could not believe this of himself. Is thy servant a dog that he should do this great thing? But he went and did those things. Sin is as Nebuchadnezzar's tree. Though you try to cut it down and remove its branches and leave only a stump, the stump of original sin is left and will sprout again and again. Enough said about the sinner, brothers, brothers and sisters. We are sinners. Amen. But then there's the Savior. It is the great question, this is a great question, is our verse, how then can man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? How can this be? How then can man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? Of a woman. Tis Christ and Christ alone which justifies man with God. That's it. Only Jesus does. <clears throat> he maketh peace in his high places by casting out a third of the angels. He, he's, he's cleaning it up, man. Cast out a third of them from heaven so he may ultimately make, make on earth peace. When, you know, when, when, when Christ came and said peace on earth, it's not peace between you and I, it's peace between God and, and sinful man. Peace in the upper springs, as it says, and peace in the nether springs. Heaven and earth. He cleans up heaven and earth, and he and he alone can clean up man. The stars are not pure in his sight, the Bible says. The heavens are not clean in his sight, the Bible says. Is there any number of his armies? He is the Lord of hosts. The host of heaven cannot be numbered. But God knows what a third is. It is the Savior that can make a man clean. So I went downtown. I went downtown on Thursday. I had, bus I had some business to attend to. Uh, specifically for the church, I had to go to the tax department, uh, East Ninth and Prospect, and I had delivery down there, so I went down uh, Superior and I, I scoped it out. The gal I wanted to see was already gone for the day, so I made arrangements to go the following day. I had all the church records in a, in a folder. I had all my papers. And I, I got a real, I got a real good parking spot. I don't know if downtown is as busy as it used to be years ago. I got a parking spot. I put the quarters in both times, just right across the street from East Ninth and Prospect. This was just a half a block away. I am marching down now. Now listen, this is one thing you can always tell about uh, girls about a young man. If a guy is walking like this. He ain't going anywhere. 
There's no destination. Chalk him off the list. <laughs> but if a man is walking like this, he has a destination. He's going someplace. So I had a destination. I wasn't dressed in a suit. I was in my work clothes. I actually had my work clothes on. I had my folder. I had all my gear. And I'm walking down. I'm going to East 9th Prospect. I know the door I'm going in. I know I have to empty out my pockets, go through the hall, the beepers and all. And I'm heading out, and I'm heading down the sidewalk. I'm going like this. I was, I was like a, a, a passenger airplane. And off to the corner of my eye came a missile. And I thought, I've been, I've been downtown three times a day for some classes. Pick up classes back in the 70s, early 70s. I've been down, down a lot. And man, this missile come. And I said, this guy's going to hit me up for money. I, I'm not afraid. I'm, we've, we've, we've been hit up in L.A. <laughs> by women for money. I've been hit up in Cleveland for money by women. I said, this guy's going to hit me up for, for money. I said, well, get ready. Here he comes. And man, it was perfect. That, that heat-seeking missile hit the TWA right here, man. And he gets right up in my face. He says, are you a lawyer? Are you a lawyer? I don't know how he thought I was a lawyer. He thought I was a lawyer. Are, are you? A, I, I need a lawyer. I need a lawyer. <laughs> needs a lawyer. I need a lawyer. So I, I stopped and I said, uh, well, I, I, I'm kind of like an advocate. <laughs> you got to know how, you, you, you can't, uh, you, you, you don't pass them before. You know, you just, I said, well, I'm, 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 I'm kind of like an advocate. I said, I could argue, I could, ar I could argue for you. But I said, I know of a better advocate. I said, Jesus will be your advocate. You gotta, uh, you gotta get, you, you have to get confidence. Get real confident. People like that. They could be intimidated also by confidence. I said, but I, I know a, a, an advocate, a lawyer who can argue your case, Jesus Christ. And I told him about Jesus. It, it went from, I need a lawyer, to thank you very much. And I went on to my appointment. You, you, you can't be afraid. And you know what? And they can tell if you're not afraid of that. Or if you're nervous, or if you get lippy, or snippy, but it, it parted with a handshake, and we were we were the best of buds. Anything? We have an advocate with a father, and his name is Jesus, the Savior. Amen. Every sinner can have the Savior. <clears throat> and upon whom doth not his light arise? The, the word of God asks this. Is this not one reason why all men is with all man, all mankind is without excuse? Because the light arises on everybody. The question is raised. How then can a man be justified with God? Only by the cleansing blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Only the Savior can forgive the sinner from doing this abominable thing which I hate. That is the sin which the sinner does. O oh man, consider the greatness of thy sin. You know, they say, they say this. I believe this is a true statement. It's easy to get men saved. It's, you know, you'll say, well, we don't believe in, uh, we don't believe in, uh, easy believe is, is it's easy to get men saved. The hard part is getting them lost. They just don't think they need Jesus. 
Once a man really realizes he needs Jesus, he'll come running. O man, consider the greatness of thy sin by the greatness of the price. Consider the greatness of thy sin by the greatness of the price that was paid for sin. Christ in his cross is the tree which Moses threw in the waters of Marah, which made the bitter water sweet, which makes the sinner a saint. The Lord showed him a tree which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. Tis the Savior which stands between the sinner and the saint. It is he, Jesus Christ, who makes the difference. Tis the Savior which stands between heaven and earth, between sinful man and his holy father, between heaven and earth. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. It is Christ and Christ alone who stands in the gap before me. All these types in the Bible. So why are we likened unto costly stones which make up the temple of God? It says we're costly stones. Costly for it costs Christ all that he had to purchase us. He sold all that he had to buy us. Christ the meal which was thrown into the pot of pot into the pot of pottage of death that the people may eat so there was no harm in the pot. We are as sick. We are as sick people. And Christ has made a medicine of his blood to cure us. Christ the great redeemer <coughs> became flesh of our flesh to become akin to us that means the near kinsman that he would that is have the right to redeem us just as Boaz as Christ says I will redeem it and bought us with his precious blood in whom we have redemption through his blood do you love your child do you love your child do you love your child when they are sick? So Christ loves us, as he loves us still when we are sick with sin. And he knows the only way to remove the sickness is to die for the sickness and wash it away. As Joab pleaded for Absalom, didn't, didn't David want Absalom back? And he, Absalom comes back to town, but he never saw his father. So Absalom says to Joab, will you please go plead? As Joab pleaded for Absalom and brought him to David, his father, Jesus Christ pleads for us and brings us to his father. Amen. Is it not fair to say Christ became the great, Christ became the greatest of sinners? For he hath made him to be sin, for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him he became as absent whose head caught hold of the oak and he was taken up between the heaven and the earth as Christ was upon the cross and his Joab smote Absalom with the three darts and slew him when that had happened all hostilities stopped and the people returned from pursuing after Israel, and all Israel fled, every one to his tent. See, when Christ died, all hostilities stopped. Peace between David and the king. David the king and the people of Israel by the death of Absalom. Peace between God and the people of this world by the death of Christ. Christ made in the likeness of man that is flesh, that through its tearing of his flesh, we may have access to the Father. He had to become flesh. Access through the, that is, the type of veil that is his flesh. And this is the way God would have it, for it goes far above all that we ask or think. It needs to be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people. We never need question such a miracle as did a Lord who questioned Elisha and said, Behold, if the Lord would have made windows in heaven, might this thing be? He was tramping. 
We never need to question God in His way. Can the Lord feed the multitudes in the wilderness for 40 years? And the Lord said, is the Lord's hand waxed short? Is anything too hard for the Lord? With God, nothing shall be impossible. A virgin birth. A sinless life. A life performing miracles. The cross which paid the sins of the world. His glorious resurrection and his soon return. Nothing's too hard for the Lord. Ah, our verse, how then can man be just divided with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? So it's the sinner and there's the Savior. And if you get saved, you'll become the saint. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. The idea of preaching is to prick a man in his heart. So all may not have the same pain at birth, but all have pains that of sorrow, humiliation and need, repentance, loss, hopeless, desperation, just like that man that came up to me, I need a lawyer, I need a lawyer. Weary with tribulation. And if one follows Christ, these pains turn to rest. Hope and comfort and gladness, freedom that they've been found and they have purpose in life. Uh, born again. Born again, as Christ tells Nicodemus. Ye must be born again. Now I do preach. I, I do preach a sermon. Now what part of this don't you get? <laughs> I just read off a half a dozen verses, and I say, now what part of that don't you get? <laughs> Ye must be born again. Now what part of that don't people get? <laughs> We now have Christ, this treasure in earthen vessels. In earthen vessels, man can't get it. And, and, and if we're buried, it can't, it can't rot. It, it, it can't rot like, like a, a steel or, or, or that. Earth. One becomes, as Paul says, a new creature. Nevertheless, the Bible says, I live. See, I am crucified with Christ. Life for the old man is a slow death for the old man. Yet I'm renewed day by day, nevertheless I live. Shall we not honor he who changed us? As it says, after I was turned, I repented. After I was turned, the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Do we still sin? Christ said, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Said of the Shulamite, which is the church, as it were, the company of two armies. It's the company of two armies, like two armies. We are likened unto, the Shulamite is, is the Song of Solomon. That is the Lord's pet name for the church. Like we have a pet name between the wife and I. I won't say what the pet name is. Because the pet name is between her and me. Just between her and me. Shulamite, I think it only appears once. That's the pet name for Jesus Christ for the church. It says, as it were, the company of two armies. It's like two armies. The church. There's the old nature. And the new nature. The old man and the new man. The old man, yeah, put off the old man. Oh, if only we were as an old man. See, it's a picture of an old man. He's weak and feeble. Hard and pain. I had to put these down when I was 40. 
You're one big blur. <laughs> hard, hard of hearing, seeing, speaking. You see, I can always say, boy, your cooking is great. See, the tasting is gone. <laughs> Walking. Oh, I just walked a, a, a half a block and I was good for the day. Walking downtown. Yet has God left us some sin in us that, that in this life to help us? He's left some sin in us in this life to help us. I know he's tired. To help us. As Paul's thorn in the flesh. To humble us. See, the further you go in this, that racket you listen to will eventually turn into so much noise you'll turn it off, thank God. We're almost done. I'm almost out of pages. We need to be as Caleb, my servant Caleb, because he hath another spirit. One must have a marked difference from darkness to light. Old things are passed away. He died, he passed away. The sinner, the Savior, and the saint. I hope the advocate, Jesus Christ, has intervened on your behalf and has turned you from a sinner to a saint. How then can man be justified with God, or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? One, one of the great hallmarks of the Bible, how then can a sinner be made a saint? Only by the blood of the Savior. It is the Savior which makes the difference between the sinner and the saint. The words of the Lord are great, are they not? So if you have headed, heeded, heeded his word by faith, give way to it. For without faith it is impossible to please him. Heeding his word. You know, salvation is as easy as this. There's two ships in the world. The lost are the one ship that's heading for the port of hell. And going the other way, there's another ship heading for the port of heaven. And it's just getting from the one ship through Jesus into the other ship. Heeding his word that the work of the Lord be performed, the sinner becomes a saint by the Savior. Then one must say, the works of the Lord are great. So, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. So Job 25 verse 4, which we've read a few times, is one of the greatest questions in the Bible. And what is the answer? How then can a man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? It is by Jesus Christ, the Savior. Sinner today, trust Christ today. Shake hands before leaving.